All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, you see this guy right here? Look, I like to preach the gospel, okay? But you know that one of the things that the Lord tells us to do, and I hope I can show you here with a different tab, maybe I can. If you can't see it, I apologize, but says right here in Ezekiel 33 chapter, I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6. Um, trying to pull up the verse here for you. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6, it warns about being a watchman, and if you, the watchman, see the trumpet and you don't blow, you're going to be um, held accountable. Blood of those souls will be on your hands. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 6 says, But if the watchmen see the word, the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Okay, so see this guy right here? He's obviously defending Anita Fuentes. This is a false prophet. His name is brother Carlos Oliveira, the one that I told you about this morning. He professes to be a brother in Christ, but sorry about the my dog barking, but um, let's look what he's saying to the brothers and sisters in Christ if he professes to be one. You are cursing yourselves. Leave that woman alone. What is she doing is none of your business. Okay? There's nothing wrong in asking. The Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek He's taking the scriptures out of context. He says, the Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Jesus was not talking about money, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus said, if you have faith and you ask him, you will receive it. And it can't be something in the flesh. You can't go to Jesus Christ and say, Father, I want that car. It's great. I want to have it so I can drive it. Or I want to get a piercing on my belly button or whatever. You have to ask for something that is not worldly. You have to ask for something that's for the glory of Jesus Christ. So he took that scripture out of context. God never said to beg for money because Jesus preached the gospel. And I've gone over this. He preached the gospel and um, he never asked for money. He was homeless. He gave, but he never asked for any money in return. Let's continue. And you'll find knock and it will be open to you for he who asks receives you six finds. The Lord is talking about if you seek him on all things, he will open the door for you. He wasn't talking about money, so this guy is a liar. All right, it's okay. We live in a free enterprise nation, okay? It's okay to ask. All right, stop persecuting that woman because she has needs, financial needs. Yeah. Stop persecuting her because she has financial needs. How about the fact that she can get a job like you? I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. You see, he's saying that you should donate to her because she has financial needs. So it's like he's incriminating her even more because we already know that she's using the donations for her financial needs. We already know that, right? But he's incriminating her even more than, than you can imagine by saying that. She has financial needs while well, she can get a job. How about that? That's none of your business. Jesus said that if there is a person that is in error, okay, like it says in Ezekiel 36, verse 6, if you see something in error, okay, so in other words, if you see that a person's in sin for whatever reason, and you don't warn that person with one witness, and then again with two witnesses, and then go to the church if they don't listen, God's going to hold you accountable, and he's going to hold the blood of those souls on your hands. If you don't warn, when he tells you to warn, like he said to prophet Ezekiel. So it does become your business, not the woman's personal life. That's not our business. You know, the false prophet's personal life, that's none of our business. But if they are doing something in the body of Christ that's causing others to fall off the path, then we must speak on it. Let's continue. And some of you guys that are persecuting that woman, you are doing for money. You are making money with AdSense, ads on the videos that you bash that woman, okay? Now, look at his face. You see how 
hateful and, and angry he looks. And he's supposed to be a man of God, but he's not. He's a Catholic. So, for one. For two, um, he is telling you people that being a watchman is bashing her. That's not persecution. A persecution, a person that's persecuted is some, an example, a good example would be Jesus Christ. He was speaking truth. He was not a sinner. He didn't agree with the world. He stayed away from the world. Okay. He called out false prophets. Jesus Christ was bold like that. He spoke boldly to the Pharisees. They were threatened by the miracles Jesus Christ was performing and the doctrines he was uh, preaching that was word of truth that they were not familiar with because they were so used to having their ears tickled. Okay. And uh, Jesus was persecuted for that, for doing righteous deeds, for hating the world. And I'm going to give you a scripture on persecution. I, I really pray to Jesus Christ that this um, video uploads. Because I'm using that snagit thing again. And um, sometimes, you know, it acts up a little bit. I'm going to show you just a couple of scriptures about persecution. And I'm trying to keep this under 15 minutes for you guys. Because with that copyright strike, unfortunately, a false copyright strike, I'm restricted to 15-minute videos. I'm just going to show you a couple of scriptures on persecution. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer, in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before I hated you. And blessing those that curse you, which I do. I bless everybody that curses me and persecutes me. You see how the Lord said, when you are not of the world, they will hate you. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. 1 John 3.13. See those scriptures? So let's go. Let's continue. So I have a warning for you. You are cursing yourselves, okay? And believe me, every time you open your mouth and say something bad about that woman, you are opening even more doors for demons to jump into you. He's cursing you and the body of Christ by saying that. Remember the Bible says that the tongue is a snare? The Bible says that whatever comes out of the mouth, you got to be careful. It's not what goes in the heart of the man. It's what comes out of the mouth that defiles him. Um, again, I hope this video uploads. I'm going to show you a scripture on that as well. Let's go to Proverbs. I mean, it's all over the scriptures, but let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 12, 13. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but he just shall come out of trouble. Psalm 64, 8. So they shall shake their own tongue. So fall upon themselves. All that see them shall be, I'm sorry, shall flee away. Psalms 59, 12, for the sin of the, their mouth, sorry, you guys, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride and for cursing any and lying which they speak. So the Lord warned about this, okay? So he's cursing you saying this. He's cursing the body of Christ saying that if you expose Anita for the false prophet she is and other false prophets, that you are cursed and I rebuke that curse right now in Jesus name and I return it back to him and I plead the blood of Jesus over all of you guys and the body of Christ and myself and this ministry because we have to stand for the Lord not not for false prophets and you guys know what I'm talking about you guys and you can relate to what I'm saying right now because you are tormented you are mentally tormented you are very tormented you are addicted to a bunch of stuff all right so help yourselves, okay? Stop persecuting those who are serving Jesus Christ. This guy begs for money too. He promotes the prosperity gospel. He's a servant of Satan like Anita Fuentes and all these other false prophets. He says that those that expose Anita Fuentes have their videos monetized and have advertisements on there and are making money. My videos are not monetized. I don't have my videos advertised. I'm not making money any off any of my videos. So that debunks what he's saying right there. 
He can't sit there and say that everybody's making money off this. This guy's completely deluded. All right? Do not be stupid anymore. All right? Stop pleasing Satan. Stop serving Satan. That's what you're doing. And, 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 and you are doing for money. You're not doing just because you you are concerned about her listeners or something like that. No, you're doing for money. You are making money off her name, off her ministry. How does he figure people are making money off her name in ministry? That makes no sense. I'm not. Ryan wasn't. He wasn't making money off her ministry. I know he's got a game. He had a gaming channel or whatever, but he was trying to expose people like this. But he got banned for exposing people like this. Prosperity gospel preachers. So what I'm saying to you guys is, He's saying all of you that expose the need of Fuentes, all of you are making money off of her videos, off of her ministry. I haven't seen a red cent, and I don't even care about money. I'm not making money off of anyone. The only money I have coming to my house is from my two jobs. My husband works. That's it. All right. Now shut up, okay, and get a life. So, is a supposed man of God supposed to say to the body of Christ, shut up and get a life? How do you think a body, a babe in Christ, if they see this man speaking like this, how do you think they'll perceive the Christian faith? They'll think it's a joke. They'll think it's the laughing stock. Okay? So someone's got to stand for the Lord Jesus. Now look at the comments people made against this person. I'm going to scroll down. Okay? Unsubbed. He obviously got people upset. See what this person said here? See? This one, okay. Let's see what this one said here. Donations after. Okay, I was upset about her always asking donations after finding out about her, but in a very forgiving manner, no matter what. Her words powerful. I believe people are jealous because of her lifestyle from the profit she's making. This is what it's really all about. People, whoever is reading this, then let it go. If it's not for her, it's going to be for someone else. Well, there might be some people jealous of her lifestyle, but not all of us. I don't care about the material things of this world. I really don't. Um, people can expose false prophets. You can. But when you start to stalk them, then that becomes a, a legal issue. Okay? But if you're exposing a false prophet for the fraud that they are, it's not about jealousy. For some people, maybe it is. But for watchmen out there, it's not. It's to get the truth out. If you are not conformed to this world and you don't care about the riches of this world, jealousy has nothing to deal with it nothing to do with it excuse me um this one says she's demanding lots of money you see taking money people's for years so people are warning this guy and this guy is just you know this is a blind a blind person that says amen this one says people are exposing her lies See, this guy's a false prophet, okay? And this same guy, okay, likes to ask for views on his channel. All right? He put up a video saying how he gets Facebook views. Sorry, you guys. Unless he took it down, because knowing him, these false prophets like to um take their what you call their videos down. He has a channel on a video on his channel that he likes to he likes to um ask about uh he, he he's teaching you guys how to get Facebook views or whatever. 
or I'm sorry, more views and subscribers, how to buy them. He has a video on his channel. I apologize if my speed is a little bit slow right now. See, when you're trying to expose a false prophet. Anyway, you guys get the point. Okay, I just thought I'd share this and let you know. And God bless.